Uh, we're going to talk about now a graphical way to do that. Um, you know, the, the, you've got to be able to do that matrix format. If you're actually writing a program to do stuff, you know, you've got to be able to code up all that matrix algebra correctly. Uh, actually, with algebra engines today, if you actually wanted to do those problems, you could, act, you know, if you're using uh, um, uh, MathCAD or something, you could actually just write them out, put the right things in, you know, and just tell it to do the manipulations, and it'll actually do all the calculations for you. That's nice. Uh, but it's hard to visualize anything with that. Uh, so we're going to use the more circles for two reasons. One is um, um, it's a 2D operation. It's easier to visualize things in 2D. And also, just because it's a graphical technique, it's a really good tool for us to illustrate changes in a way that's intuitive and can help you understand them and not just be a bunch of numbers. So we use more circles a lot. Uh, um, it's a very old method, but I think it's, a, it's, a, it's not only just a great educational method, but it's also a good way to explain stuff uh, practically to colleagues and people, I believe. So in this little module, um, you should be able to, this, this is a, um, um, the, the short version of this learning objectives is you should be able to learn, you should be able to use more circles, but in, in, in particular, um, you need to understand this concept of the origins of planes uh, for a more circle and find what we we we, we call the pole point. Um, and then, if you're given a more circle of stresses, determine the magnitude and principles during the magnitude of the principal stresses. We haven't talked about principal stresses yet, but which uh, should be a quick review for you. And the orientation of the principal plane, I guess it would be helpful if I spelled that one correct. There's a correction for me to make. Um, and then given uh, a more circle, you should be able to turn the magnitude of the shear stresses and normal stresses on any arbitrary plane. Um, and determine where that acts. Or given a plane, either way, either, either given a plane, determine the magnitude of stresses on that, or given the stresses, determine where, what plane it's on, either one. Okay, so let's go back to our same example as we had before. Here's our point A. We're starting off with things in the XZ space just as we did before. Uh, we have this desire to transform those things into this uh, AB space, again, because we're interested in that for some reason. Again, you know, maybe we're interested in this, the stresses on this uh, particular shear surface that we're looking at a slope stability problem in. All right. We spent a lot of time last lesson talking about signs and sign conventions for three-dimensional states of stress. And we're about to define another sign convention for more circles. These two sign conventions don't have anything to do with each other. We're going to use a completely different set of sign conventions uh, for the shear stress. The, the normal stresses, we still have compression positive and tension negative. But for the shear stresses, we're going to have a completely different set of sign conventions in Mohr circle that applies only to Mohr circles. Okay, that's really important for you to understand. Because uh, in, in a Mohr circle, we're, gonna, we're, we're only going to have one set of, you know, in, in two dimensions. Let me go back a slide here. Oops. Um, what, can, what can we say about tau AB and tau BA? Well, they have, to be, they have to be the same magnitude, right, so or else my little thing is perfect. And, and if we were, we were going to write a two-dimensional uh, stress tensor for this, we're going to have sigma A, sigma B, and we're going to have tau AB, and we're going to have tau BA, and those, those two are going to be equal. But what about, the si what about the signs of these two stresses, these two shear stresses? They're either, they're, you know, they're either going to be positive or negative. We could figure it out real quick. Let's go ahead and figure it out. Let's see. This is an, um, this is an A plane, right? It's an A, right? The normal is in A direction, right? And um, the B, and, and so is this a positive plane or a negative plane? The, 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 the shear stress is acting in a, the, the compressive shear stress is acting in the A direction, so that's a positive plane. So this is direction of B. So is tau AB positive or negative in this one? Positive. It's positive, correct. So that's a positive, right? So don't so the shear stress, the 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 the, the, uh, two, the, the state of stress, shear stress of this is positive. Okay, hold on to that thought because we're gonna do, we're gonna show that same state as we're gonna show that that same state of stress in a more circle. And one of those shear stresses is going to be positive in more circles, and one of them is going to be negative. 
and I'll, I'll give you the convention, but that should alone convince you that the, 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 the signs or the sense of shear stresses in a Mohr circle has nothing to do with the signs of them in three-dimensional space or two-dimensional space. It's a different system. So, this, and this may be seem very trivial to you, but it's important. What's this ax, you know, what's this axis in this direction? It's a sigma axis, right? Is it an x-axis? Well, mathematically you might call it an x-axis, but, but it's really not an x-axis in this direction. And it's not a b axis it's, it's not a, that's not a, this is not an a, a x-y system, and it's not an a-b system, right? This is a normal system, that this is normal in this direction, and this is shear in that direction. There is going to be a relationship between the way we draw stuff here in the XY and the AB space, but this is not an XY space or it's not an AB space. This is a normal stress and shear stress space, which is another reason why the signs don't, make, don't, don't have anything to do with each other. Okay, we're going to use this, this convention that's shown here for, um, for shear stresses. Um, and, uh, if, the, if you want to think about it, if you're used to using the right-hand rule, this is the right-hand rule where your thumb will point out of the paper, right? So if I, you know, so that's positive, and if your thumb points into the paper, it's negative. Or another way to say that is if the shear stress would tend to rotate the, the, uh, the element in a counterclockwise direction, it's positive, and it rotates in a clockwise direction, it's negative. So you can, I like to do the right-hand rule and think that if I'm poking myself in the eye, it's a good thing. Uh, but you can do it any way you want. So what we're going to do in this is we're going to, so we're going to, let me go, I'm, I'm getting really sidetracked. So we're, we're going to, we want, we're going to start with this space. Let me erase this. We're going to start with the X, the X, uh, Y space, and we want to transform it to the A, B space. So I'm assuming that I know this, the, the, I, I know this uh, stress tensor in this space. I know the magnitudes of the normal shear stresses in the X space, and I want to get it in the A, B space. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the value. Uh, I'm going to, uh, of sigma x and tau z x, I'm just going to plot that, I'm going to call that the point x, and then I'm going to plot the same value on the, uh, on the, the plane normal to that, right? Th this represents the values on the x plane, and this represents the values on the z plane, and those two planes are normal to each other, right? This only works when you take, when you use planes that are normal to one another, right? And then I'm going to draw a circle that connects those two. Um, the easiest way to draw a circle that connects those two is you draw a diameter and where it crosses the center. You put your one into your compass there, put your under the compass there, and you, and you rotate it around. Now, if you want to do this correctly and get real numeric values out of this, you've got to draw this to scale. So this, I know this really pains students of the 21st century, but you really need to do this to scale, and you really need a compass. And I'm going to ask you to do this once. Or the other way you can do it is you can get out AutoCAD or one of your drawing programs and draw it to scale. But you've got to draw it to scale or it doesn't work because that's a graphical method. So you're going to have to do this once for homework. So, you know, either get out AutoCAD and do it or get a compass out and do it. But don't, don't turn me in some hand-drawn crap or sketch for this because it's, it, it's a graphical method. You have to do it now. Now, you can, draw, you can sketch them by hand to get an understanding of how things are behaving, and we'll do that a lot. But if you want the values off it, you got to draw it to scale because it's a graphical method. It's pretty straightforward. All right. So this is my Mohr circle. That Mohr circle defines the state of stress at the point A. Remember, at point A, um, I can have you know I can have this. I, I can talk about the state of stress in this uh, coordinate system, or this one, or any other one. It's all the same, right? Well, that circle is the all the same about those. There's this circle there, and that circle represents all possible states of stress. I just pick different points on the circle, and I get different orientations of it, but they're all the same circle. So that circle is the state of stress at point A. A couple important things about that circle, that, and you know, you know a lot of them already, that the, at the center of the circle, we're going to have what we call the mean normal stress, because that's the average of sigma x and, and, and uh, sigma z, right? It's the center of the circle is the average of those two. And there's no shear stress on there. So that's a point that we'll, that we'll call sigma m. That's our mean normal stress. Or if you want to think of it in terms of pressure, that's the average pressure and, and zero. 
Another important point. Uh, the diameter of that circle doesn't change, right? And the diameter of the circle, we just do it mathematically, is shown there. It's sigma z minus sigma x squared. This is, this is just Pythagoras, right? Uh, plus 2 times uh, tau uh, zx, because tau zx is, is this distance right there, right? And you got two of them here. All I'm doing is doing a triangle here, right? So the length of that is, that's the hypotenuse, right? just like they did in The Wizard of Oz. Um, you know, years later, I didn't. I, I never understood that part until I was an adult and watched The Wizard of Oz. So, so this more circle, that, so that defines my more circle. If I know the center and I know the diameter of the circle, that defines the circle, right? There's a lot of ways to define a circle, but that's the way we're going to do it. So every pair of opposite points on this circle represents a set of stresses, stresses on some uh, pair of um, planes that are normal to each other. And by opposite, I mean in, any, any state of stress that passes through the middle. So I can take that, I can draw that diameter, and there's two points. Those two points represent the state of stress on two normal planes. And we're going to talk about which ones in a minute. Okay? Oops, look at that. I didn't want to. It's almost there. That was pretty cool. So there's one. There's another one. Um, those, there, there's diff three different, uh, uh, there's three different um, orientations of my elemental cube with three different values. That not notice that every, every one of these has different values of, of, of sigma and different values of tau, but it's all one state of stress. They're all in the same circle. Okay, let's talk about this concept of the pull point or the origin of planes, because this is what's going to relate this pull point is what's going to relate the, the, the angles and, and the positions in my sigma tau space to the ones in the xy space. Because I obviously, this, is, this particular diameter is not some arbitrary you know, state of stress. That's the state of stress on, in that system, right? It's not an arbitrary one. It's one for the, for the, where, the, where the, the planes are horizontal oriented horizontally and vertically. It's not some arbitrary one. So, let's see if I can do this. No, I guess I'll just do it the long way. Okay, so the origin point. So this is the definition, which is a very wordy definition. This is one of those things where we can write the words down, but it's a lot easier to show you. So, but I'll just read this because there's only one way to do it. So the pull point or the origin of planes, it's a point on the circle P. We're going to call it P. So it's a point on the circle such that um, if I draw a line from that point through any other point, let's say any arbitrary point D, um, the line PD is a line parallel to the, a line that, that lies within the plane on which the stresses at point D act. Or another way to say it, it's easy, I think it's easier to say it the backwards. If I'm at a point D, and I draw a line through the pull point, that line is parallel to the, the plane on which the stresses at point D act. So that's, those words are there, they're written down, you got them. Let me show you, and then you can go home and read it again and, and take it and, and really understand it. This is one of those ones where, this is what, one of the reasons why we're engineers, because we can draw better than we can speak sometimes. Okay, so let's start with here. And, and let's let's think about this for a second. Th this point right here represents the stresses on which plane? The x plane. Okay. So if I was to draw a line from x parallel to the x plane, what would that line look like? If I started here, and and, and I want to find the pull point. So what I want to do is draw a line from here parallel to the plane on which these stresses act. So which plane do the, do the x stresses act? So x is, you know, right? This is sigma x. This is sig sigma z, right? And I've got, I've got a tau here right now. I've got my tau. This is tau x z. And this is tau zx, right? I should have drawn that bigger, sorry. So this point represents these stresses, right? 
What plane do they act on? They act on this plane. Are you with me? Well, let's see if I did this right, because I didn't practice this beforehand. Oh, sweet. OK, so there is a line that passes through point x that's parallel to the plane on which the x stresses act. So what's this little dot right there? That's the pull point. So let's try it with the z ones, all right? Th this little circle here is the, uh, the stresses acting on the z plane. That represents, let's do this, let's change color. OK, this represents these stresses there, right? What plane do the z stresses act on? They act on a horizontal plane, correct? So that should be this. Magic, it goes through the same place. That is the pole, the key. So now you can go back and reread those words, and, and that, that's, that's what those words say. This is easy to mess up. Usually, so if you think about it, there, it, it you know, when, when there's x, y places, lots of times what you guys will do is you'll mess up, and you'll, you'll end up calling this the pull point there. Because you'll say, oh, these are the x stresses, the x and the x direction. Yeah, well, they act in the x direction, but that's not the definition. The definition is it's the direction parallel to, parallel to the plane on which those stresses act. Right? Could be an interesting recording today if it's that loud next door. Um, okay, so that's the pull point. There's a really convenient way to draw this that I think it's really handy, um, and I do this all the time because it's easy for me to, because I, I make the same mistake that I just told you guys you're going to make. And so here's a little trick that I do that I, I find really handy, um, and that is if you take uh, one of the lines that passes through the pole and you extend it out beyond the circle where it's just a convenient location, and then you draw your el elemental, um, your little element there, then the, uh, um, the stresses on that line, the, the, the stresses from the point that represent that line act on that plane. So notice this is, this is sigma z and tau z x, and this is sigma z and tau z x, right? And so if I took this line and extended it this way, Right, and drew my little elemental area. Right, this is sigma x and tau z x, where they're acting in this direction, right? And so um, that happens to, and, and notice that they act on that. that. So that's a little that's a little trick I use. I do this all the time, especially when they're not vertical and horizontal. I draw the I, I draw the line, I draw my little element on it, and I can immediately figure out what the stresses are. I usually don't draw two of them; I just draw one of them. So I, I'll draw this little element here. I'll figure out that this is tau uh, sigma uh, uh, sigma z and tau z x. So this uh, I mean, uh, so this has to be sigma x and tau x z. Does that make sense? It's just a little trick, but it's a really handy one to make sure you got the directions correct because it's really easy to get them 90 degrees off, right? And if you if you do that, you look at it and it's not right, then you know you got the wrong pole point. You know, it's, just, it's the one on the other side of the circle. So and I'll, let's point out one more thing about this. Okay, let's talk about sine here for just a minute because we talked about sine. So is this a um, positive tau or a negative tau at that point? It's positive because it's above the, you know, it's above the line, right? It's, you know, it's in the positive y area, so it's got to be positive. And let's just check real quick. That's tau xz, so it's the tau on the x plane acting in the z direction. That's this one. Is that, um, oops, no, I said that wrong, didn't I? Um, this is x, yep, yep. We're, we're on this one, right? Um, I said that all wrong, so let me, let me erase one more time. That's why you do this. So this is the x. This is tau z x. It's the, it's the uh, stress, the shear stress on the x plane acting in the z direction. Is that a positive one? Well, that's tending to rotate this thing in this direction. That's positive. So um, conversely, um, this is uh, sigma z and tau uh, zx. That represents sigma z and tau zx. Well, tau zx, you know, that's on the z plane acting in the x direction. That's this direction. Now, is this a positive value down here? Yeah, it's below the, you know, it's below the origin, so that's a, uh, that's a negative value. And, and this is tending to rotate the, the, the element in this direction, and that's a negative shear stress. So in more circle space, 
This state of stress has a positive shear stress and a negative shear stress. Well, what was it in XZ space? They were all positive, right? We just went through that, right? This sign convention for more circles only applies to more circles. It doesn't apply to non-more circles. So don't confuse the two, right? And then you also see people sometimes that have ways of drawing three-dimensional more uh, short more circles for three-dimensional states of stress. I'm, it doesn't really work very well, so I don't like to do it. Um, all right. So let's talk. Uh, let's let's quickly review principal stresses. Principal stresses locate those. So what's a principal stress? Principal planes are the planes. What's special about principal planes? No shear stress, right? So where are the two planes? Let's just look at this row. Where are the two planes here that, that, that where there's no shear stress? They got to be on the circle, right? So there's one here and there's one there. And if we connect them with a the diameter, there's got to be you know that's two that's two uh, normal planes. So those are the those are the th th this is the location of the principal planes. So this is and, and one of them is bigger than the other one, right? And the big one we call sigma one, and the small one we call sigma three, because we don't know the intermediate one. We're assuming that, I mean, it actually could be that the, the third dimension is a different stress, but normally we, we're, we'll do it this way. So those are the normal circle. Those, those are the, the principal circles. Well, what angle do they act on? Well, all you got to do is draw a line through one of these through the um, pole. That's the actual angle, that, the, that that's the angle in x, in x, y space that that, that, that uh, stress acts on. And so this is where it's really nice just to draw your, your little cube on there. That's it. That's the exact, if you've drawn the scale, that's the exact angle. That angle is beta, right? This is what I like about that little drawing exercise. You just extend that line, just take this line, extend it way out, Draw your little cube on there and say, well, this is this, this is the sigma one one. It's got to act normal to that. So that's sigma one, and that means this has to be sigma three because it's the conjugate stress. Okay, that makes sense. And the magnitudes we just measure this. If you want to know the magnitudes, ah. if you want to know the magnitudes, we just you know we just measure this distance from there to there. That's sigma three. We measure this distance from there to there. That's sigma one. This is sigma three. We get our slap our ruler down and measure them. Yeah. Okay. So this is a let's let, that's a that's a great question. Let's do it. Um, okay. So this is the point we started with, and we drew a line through the pole. This is the line we drew through the pole. What does that line represent? It's parallel to what? Uh, it's parallel to the the plane on which the stresses at this point represent. It's the plane on which these stresses act. Well, what stresses are there at this point? There's only a, a sigma stress. There's no shear stress. They're acting on this plane. It's a normal stress, so it's got to be normal to this, right? That's sigma one. That's that's the trick. It's not parallel to the normal. <laughs> here's a way to here's a way to keep your messing up. It's parallel to something, right? Well, it can't be parallel to both the normal stress and the shear stress because they're those those two stresses are, are normal to each other. It can't be parallel to two normal things, right? So it, it's not it's not parallel to any stress. It's parallel to the plane on which those stresses act. There's a good way to keep from the, the common mistake you're going to say, oh, it's parallel to the normal stress. No, no, it's actually normal to the normal stress. That that's not confusing. I don't know what it is, but but if you, you know if you think it's parallel to something, well, it can't be parallel to two stresses because this this point right here represents two stresses, right? One of them happens to be zero, has a magnitude of zero, but it still, you know, if you want to think about it, it still has a direction sort of, but has a magnitude of zero. Well, this this line can't be parallel to two stresses, so it must be parallel to the plane on which those stresses act. Does that help? See, so you're a structural engineer, and you never got that. I'm telling you guys. You should always be geotechs first, you know. Um, let's see, this direction I'm going. Okay, now, well, let's talk about an arbitrary plane. That was nice, but if you remember, um, um, I 
thought, never mind. I thought I could skip from, I obviously don't know how to skip to, uh, maybe if I do this, it does. Oh, there's, there's what I want. Remember what we were really interested in was, um, we were really interested in these stresses on the AB plane, right? Not, I mean, the principal stresses are important. We know why they are important. We're gonna, they're gonna be important. Uh, but we also, what we really interested was what's going on in the AB plane, right? So how do we, how, how do, we do that? Um, uh, AB plane, there we go. Oops, nope, that wasn't the right one. I think it's this one. Nope, it's the next one. Okay. Okay, we're, we're interested in what's going on in the AB plane. So, well, how do I do that? Well, uh, I know the angle that the AB plane makes with the horizontal, right? It was theta with the horizontal, right? And this line, got to be careful, this line PZ represents the horizontal plane. Now, th one of the confusing things is, is um, the, the horizontal plane doesn't necessarily rep represent uh, the, 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 the principal stress. Lot, w one of the confusing things we do this is when the, lots of times the principal stresses are also, the principal planes are also horizontal and vertical planes, but that's not always true. So don't, confu don't confuse principal planes with X, Z planes. And, and many, many times we, we don't have any shear stresses at the surface and there's nothing else going on. The, the, the principal planes are also horizontal and vertical, but that's not always true. So don't mess that one up. Um, Anyway, so we know we know from our uh, from the, the orientation of the real of the real world that we wanted to, we want to know the stresses at an angle theta from the horizontal, right? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the pole. I'm going to draw a line that's parallel to the to the direction that we're interested in, the, or the plane on which we're interested in the stresses, right? And that's going to intersect the circle at this point B. So what are, what are what is uh, the sigma and tau values that B represent? They re represent the normal and shear stresses acting on a plane parallel to this line, right? And the conjugate of that is A. It's going to be 90 degrees from there. That's going to intersect the circle there, and then these. The, the, the value of, sh of shear and normal stress here is going to represent the shear and normal stresses acting on a plane parallel to this line. And notice when I do that, if I draw a line between the two of those, you know, it's going to be a diameter that passes right through the middle, and those are obviously going to be um, normal, uh, two planes that are normal to each other. So then I just draw my, uh, my cube on there. I do this to keep my orientation straight. Um, and let me so let's, let's be really explicit about this. So what is the magnitude of sigma b? It's on this chart. What is the magnitude of sigma b? Well, here's the sigma axis, right? This is the b point. So the magnet, this distance right there, I plop my ruler down. You know, it's going to be so many psi per inch, or so many, so many, so many kPa per centimeter. I measure that distance. That is the magnitude of sigma b. All right? What's the magnitude of tau ba? Well, this is the tau axis here. So this distance from there to there is going to be the magnitude of tau ba. Notice that that's negative in more circle space, right? Well, this shear stress is tending to rotate this in a clockwise direction. That's negative. This, so when you do, you, you got this homework problem, you got to draw more circles, and you got to flop your ruler down. You got to measure these things. You got to draw it to scale. Okay, so these are useful formulae. This is the thing that Noah was so kind to point out to me that I screwed up in the homework because. Um, you, you probably want to print this page out, put it somewhere, write these someplace, because uh, um, one of the few faults I have already with Holtz and Kovacs, they don't actually give these formula in a place where it's easy and convenient to find them. And 
and Das used to, but this, is, I want, so when, I, when you do your homework, I want you to do this more circle and draw it out to scale for the homework and actually measure everything off and slap your ruler down and measure it. And I also want you to run through these formulae and get the same answer and convince yourself that they are the same. And if they're not the same, then you're doing something wrong. Okay? So this is the transform form, uh, from principal stresses to, uh, uh, or this is the values of how to compute the principal stresses from any arbitrary uh, state of stress. And this is the angle. This is now the angle between the principal stresses and, and whatever stresses you're measuring them from theta. And here's how to calculate. It's, it, you can write these equations for any arbitrary uh, stress state, but it's convenient to write, write the, the equations from uh, the principal stresses, because once you got the principal stresses, then the, the shear stress term's not in there. It's just a shorter equation. So that's that equation. These are actually are buried in Holtz and Kovacs in a couple places, but they're not in a really simple place to find. So there are some useful formulae for you. Okay, I'm not going to go through this whole more circle example, but we'll we'll look at it real quickly uh, to make sure it makes sense, and then we'll move on to the last module. Um, okay, so let's first plot the more circle. Okay, so. Um, We'll, we'll, and we'll start with the, uh, uh, this is, I, I stole this from DOS or somebody, so the axis system's not my normal axis system, but this is sigma y, uh, tau xy, and this is uh, sigma x and tau, X, uh, uh, tau xy. So let's start with the, with the y's. So this is uh, 50 kilonewtons uh, per square meter, 50 kPa, uh, and that's uh, compression, so it's positive. And this is uh, 50 kilonewtons uh, 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 for the shear stress, 50 kPa for the shear stress. Is that positive or negative? Positive. Well, in a more circle sense, it's positive. So that's what we're going to do. In the, in the uh, if this was x, let's assume it was x y like this. Uh, let's real, let's check real quick. This is x y. I'm a slob. Uh, so this would be, if this was x, y, is this a positive or a negative uh, plane? In, in the non more so in the, in the three, in the, in the, in the x, x, y sense. Let's see, this is a compression. It's pointing down. If this is the axis system, this, if this is positive y, it's in the opposite direction, so this would be a negative plane, right? And is this acting uh, in, or this is acting in a negative direction, it's a negative plane, so that would be a positive shear stress. Right, so this this is positive both in the more circle sense and in the in the x y sense, right? Okay, but we're going to just plot these ones first. So we have a positive in in more circle sense. We have a positive uh, normal stress, and we have a we have a positive shear stress. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, this is. Yeah, that, that should be, this one should be yx and that one should be xy. And, and we do this all the time. We don't bother to do that because they're the same, right? Yeah, but you're, you're correct. The correct notation is, yeah. And I, I'm sure that I'm just as sloppy as, well, I'm sure I'm not as sloppy as this in my textbooks. So it's probably right in my textbook. But outside of the textbook, I'm sure I'm not sloppy. Um, so let's make sure that works. So this is, um, um, plus 50 and plus 50, so here's 50, and there's 50, there's plus 50 and plus 50. Cool. Uh, let's go to the other one. Okay, this is, the, the normal stress is plus 150 kPa, and I obviously have to have the same 50 uh, kPa. Now this is negative in a more circle sense, right? Because it's tending to, to rotate the, the more circle in a uh, counterclockwise direction, so that's a negative shear stress. It's still a positive shear stress in the xy space because, uh, well, if I go back to this, this is x, this is y, right? This is neg this is a, a, a still a negative plane on the, this is still a negative plane here, uh, and this is pointing in a uh, uh, negative direction direction, so that's still positive, right? But in the, in a more circle sense, it's negative. So here we are at. 150, so we're 150 out to here, and we're down a negative 50. That's this point. There's, this, there's that current plane. <coughs> now the question being asked is, well, what's going on in a plane that's 10 degrees from this direction? Okay. Well, here's my little 
square right there. You know, what I really want to do is just transport that over here. Oh, we, we, we need to find the pull point. I forgot to, let's do the pull point. Um, and let's, th they did the pull point from in. Let's do the pull point from the red side. Okay, this 50-50 is there. These stresses act on what plane? The, re the red ones act on this plane. So we're gonna draw a line parallel to that. We're gonna start at M, then draw a line parallel to that. That's gonna intersect the circle at the pull point. Okay, so we're, we're concerned about something that's 10 degrees off of that. So all I do is I start at the pull point. I'm, I'm concerned about this little square here. It's 10 degrees off of there, so I'm just gonna draw, this is gonna be 10 degrees. I'm just gonna draw this line right there. There is my, my little elemental cube where that intersects the circle. If I slap my ruler down, it's gonna be plus 164 and minus 29.9. Uh, that represents which stresses? Whether the stress is acting on this plane, so that's this normal stress, and the tau is negative, so that's gonna be tending to, I should draw that, let me draw it up here because I can draw a bigger one for you. So that's, this is the plane that this is parallel to, so it's this normal stress is gonna be 164. And the shear stress is gonna be minus 29, minus 29 in a more circle sense, so that's gonna tend to rotate the thing clockwise, so that's gonna be in this direction, or in this side, it's gonna be in that direction, and it's gonna have a value of 29.9. So the two, well, hang on. We'll write the 2D stress there in just a second, okay? So um, if I wanted to know these normal stresses and this shear stress, um, how do I do that? Well, that is gonna be, this is the one. Where's the conjugate pair? Where's, where's the point on the, on the uh, plane, representing the stresses on the plane normal to that? I draw my diameter, it's right there. And it's going to have a value, well, I'm not going to figure it out, but this is going to be 29. And the other one is going to be the average of the other two. You know, I can, you, can, you can figure it out by these two distances are going to be the same, but I'm not going to sit there and do that. But this one is going to be, uh, it's going to be a plus 29 in a more circle sense. Whoops, sorry here, this one's 29.9. Right, and notice that's tending to rotate it counterclockwise, so that's good. And this is going to be sigma, whatever we call that, Q. This is, uh, M N M P Q or Q R I guess we call this. This would be sigma R. Now let's go back to th this state of stress here and write the stress tensor for that because that's something I had you do. Let's try the X Y Z stress tensor. All right. So what's sigma Y? Go, sigma Y is going to go here. That's 50. All right. Sigma X is going to go here. I'm sorry. Sigma X is going to go there. That's 150. And sigma Y is going to go here. That's 50. So this is going to be uh, tau uh, xy, and this is going to be tau yx. Uh, that's going to be 50, and this is going to be 50. They're both going to be positive. Why are they positive? It's a symmetric matrix. They have to have the same magnitude and sign. It's a symmetric matrix. So when you turn your homework one into me, don't turn me, I have you draw the don't, you know, stress tensors. What, what the bad habit is people are going to say, oh, well, this one's positive, and this one's negative, and they're going to turn on a, a matrix that has a that they're going to turn a stress tensor there that's got a positive and a negative. You can't have that. that. What you're doing is turning into me the stress tensor with the sign notation for a Mohr circle. Right? One of those is, you know, what's this axis? This axis is, represents what? Yeah, which stress? Normal, Normal stress. This, a, this axis represents, is one of those axes X and one of those axes Y? Is one of those axes Z and one of those axes Y? No, they're shear and normal. They're not X and Y. There's a relationship between X and Y, and it's related to this pole point right there. But they're not X, they're not Y. They're not X, they're not Z. Okay? Good point. 